What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am at Prestige Motorcycles. They're a sales, service, and parts store here located in San Diego. And uh, today they invited me over to review their 2017 FC09. <music> So, as you may be familiar in my channel, I've reviewed recently the Duke 890R. I currently own the Street Triple 765RS, and I've also recently reviewed the MV Augusta 800RC on the channel. So, all these motorcycles are pretty much middleweight sport naked bikes, and they all have one thing in common. They're a lot of fun to ride, they're very torquey, and they're sport bikes with a naked exterior. So here's something that I've been looking forward to riding for a very, very long time. And um, this model is called an FZ, but the 2019 models are called MT. And MT stands for, believe it or not, Masters of Torque. Now I went online, I looked around to see if I can find what the two letters for FC stands for, and I just couldn't find it. But uh, the new models are called MT-09s. So this being the Master of Torque, it has 65 foot-pounds of it, and that is a whole lot for this class, for this particular category. And the horsepower sits right at home at 115. So not too shabby, not too bad. The engine is powered by a liquid-cooled 847cc inline-3 engine, which that's where it gets most of its torque curve. The, uh, as an example, the 765RS that I have some, has somewhere around 50 foot-pounds of torque, but the displacement is lesser as well. But in this category, the displacement is higher, and that's where most of the torque comes from. And the fuel capacity on this is a 3.7 gallon fuel tank. Although the, the fuel tank looks pretty big, I'm very surprised that it's only 3.7 gallons. I would assume that it would be somewhere around 4. And wet weight on this motorcycle is 425 pounds. Not too heavy, but not super light either. I'm sure you can shed a couple of pounds by removing this huge rear fender in the back, maybe put a lighter battery pack. But when it comes to naked motorcycles, they're already as light as they come because they have no fairings. And honestly, what can you remove besides the foot pegs? So for short riders such as myself, uh, you're going to be pretty happy because this motorcycle has a 32.7 inch seat height. Getting on this motorcycle for a person such as myself who's uh, who's on the shorter end, it does feel pretty good but as I made uh, that other video where I talk about uh, motorcycles for short people or just riding it if you're a short stature person, I don't think this motorcycle is going to be really that much of an issue as any motorcycle. It's all about skill but regardless, 32.7 inches it's not a whole lot. Now, as far as the electronics on this motorcycle are concerned, nothing groundbreaking. This is, we're talking about a $9,000 motorcycle, so this is going to be one of your budget-friendly motorcycles for people who are budget-minded and don't want to spend a whole lot of money. So, with that being said, it does have adjustable traction control. It has ABS as standard and three riding modes. So, you have, just like the typical Yamaha motorcycles, like, for instance, my Yamaha R6, it's got A mode. Mode, it's got standard and then B mode. A mode obviously being full power, standard being standard, and B mode low power. So up in the front we have 41 millimeter shocks. They are adjustable and in the rear we have a single shock and that's fully adjustable as well. Uh, standard for this category you have a 180 size tire in the back and you have a 120 tire in the front. And brakes on the front are not so meaty. I wish they were a little bit more meatier than this, but we're going to find out once we get on the road. But you have a single piston caliper that's uh, 240 that that's equipped on a 245 millimeter disc on both sides. And in the rear, we have a 298 millimeter disc. All right, guys, I don't know about you, but I'm super excited to ride this bike. Let's go. All right, guys, first ride and a cold start on an MT09 slash FZ09. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa! 
from first impressions I can tell you this much there's a lot of down low torque <laughs> wow and the characteristic of the engine the sound of it is very very similar to my street triple RS I'm liking this bike already first impressions good Oh man, this has a serious amount of torque. Jeez Louise. All right, all right. Man, if you're not watching your speedometer, you're gonna be in triple digits very quickly with the front wheel up in the air. All right, so as far as 65 foot-pounds of torque is concerned, check. It definitely delivers on that promise. No disappointment there. So before I get too excited with the joy of riding a brand new bike, something that I've been looking forward to for a very, very long time, we're gonna break this review down into several different subjects, not in, an, in any particular order. So we're gonna be talking about comfort. We're gonna be talking about performance. We're gonna be talking about ergonomics. And how does the bike feel? How does it make you feel when you're riding it? Is it comfortable? Is it great for day-to-day -day riding? So aside the motorcycle being a master of torque, it is also a master of comfort because, wow, the handlebars are close to the rider and you're literally sitting in a supermoto position right on the tank. The seat is nice and narrow. It's not very, very wide in the front. So as far as your crotch area is concerned, it's in a pretty comfortable position, but I'm noticing myself not sitting on the tank. Like I'm not really on the tank as I would be on my Street Triple RS. On my Street Triple RS, I am further away from the handlebars, but on this, I feel like I'm very close to it, but my crotch is not touching the tank, which is a pretty good thing. So overall comfort, I would give this a nine out of 10. The mirrors don't vibrate at all, but they are kind of flimsy. They don't look very quality though. That's the only thing. I see a little bit of vibration on the mirrors, but not a whole lot. They're still very easy to see out of. If you're a big guy, you can stretch them out a little bit, move them toward the side. As far as ergonomics are concerned, I would definitely say it's really, really good. Now, we are on some bumpy surfaces. The suspension seems to be very, very comfortable as well. It's not a bone jarring setting, but of course, as I already talked about, the suspension is fully adjustable. One characteristic that I like about this motorcycle as far as handling is concerned, that it feels very, very light and flickable. Tossing this from left to right gives a simulation of how it would handle in the corners. And I can tell you that it feels super light. 425 pounds and it makes it feel like this motorcycle is under 400. As far as agility is concerned, I'm pretty confident this motorcycle is fantastic. I would love to take it up into the mountains and play around with it. Would be a pretty good track toy as well, I believe. So currently riding in standard mode and I haven't felt like the power has been lacking. It still has a, lo a lot of low end torque. I'm at 6,000 RPM right now. If I give it the bean, I'm in stratospheric speeds but it has a lot of low end power and that's what these motorcycles are very, very well known for. 67 foot pounds of torque with 425 pounds wet, it does not disappoint at all, not even one bit. Shifting this motorcycle is really not that difficult to do either. It has a slipper clutch and the clutch feels very, very light. And I like that because as a motorcycle that a lot of people buy to commute day daily back and forth to work but also have some fun in, you don't want a very, very hard clutch. Holy shit, this thing has a lot of torque. Wow. It, it feels like a huge bike, man. Torque is what really matters in the real world. Horsepower is great if you want to go seriously fast. But torque is what makes a motorcycle super fun. And this motorcycle is a lot of fun. Wow, I am astonished. My, uh, my Street Triple RS has 56, 58 foot-pounds of torque. And that extra 10 foot-pounds of torque makes a huge difference. I had no idea. I had no idea it makes that much of a big difference. And I'm in fifth gear. Fifth gear! I'm not even like low in the gears. And there's a lot of torque. Amazing. Really, really amazing. I like how this has indicators 
that has a right blinker when you're going right, left blinker when you're going left. I wish all motorcycles had that as standard, but some of them, they just have one blinker regardless of which direction you're going. So kudos to Yamaha for putting that on. Man, I love the sound of this motorcycle. The three-cylinder triples, they do not disappoint. That's what I fell in love with when I bought my uh, 765 RS. I fell in love with that sound. And up until recently, I had no idea that these motorcycles ran on an inline three-cylinder. Oh, this is gorgeous. Check this view out, guys. Wow. Let's pull over here and admire it. You know what I like mostly about this motorcycle is that it only costs nine grand brand new. And the model that I'm riding right now has 4,000 miles, which is absolutely nothing. And it's a 2017 model. And so if you were interested in picking up this bike, it feels brand new to me and you can buy it. It's at the dealership at the moment. I'm not trying to make a hard sell for prestige motorcycles, but this is as, as new as you're gonna get. Let's get going. All right, let's talk a little bit about the power now. So we're in standard mode at the moment, but let's kick it up a notch and go to A mode. All right, now we're in A mode. Wow, holy macro, so much torque. Jeez Louise, I'm in third gear and this thing just keeps pulling. Damn. Amazing how much pull this motorcycle has. I can see why they call this motorcycle a, a master of torque. It's definitely a wheelie monster. I mean, I'm not really that big into wheelies. I don't even know how to do one. <laughs> Fully admitting that I do not know how to do wheelies. But that being said, for the person who likes to do them and knows how to do them very well, I think that you can get away doing wheelies on this thing effortlessly. Let's see how much torque this thing has when you're high up in the gears. Sixth gear right now doing 64 miles an hour, 4,000 RPM. So now I am wide open throttle and it does bog down a little bit, but I still see the speedometer going up. It's bogging a little bit. Let's go down to fifth, give it wide open throttle, see what happens. Bogging a little bit, but after 7,000 picks right up, fourth gear. All right, no bogging. This thing just continues to pull. Wow, amazing. And you know what, 115 horsepower, it's not too bad. I think this motorcycle has a great combination of power, of the power delivery and how it delivers the power. Man, you're looking at a really, really good value of a motorcycle. $9,000 for this much performance. Now granted, you know, you, you, you aren't getting top spec equipment on this motorcycle. The LCD dash is rather small. Although it does provide good information on the motorcycle, it's got the readout of how fast you're going, a good prominent location for the gear that you're currently in, as well as a fuel gauge. Look at that. It's got a fuel gauge. It'll tell you when you're going to be running out of fuel and you can anticipate it and get to a fuel station prior to that. And I'm noticing that there's an eco mode. So if you don't give it gas or not too much of it, it'll go into eco mode, which is pretty cool. There's at least five different riding modes in modern motorcycles engine braking control, IMUs, which is the inertial measurement units, cornering ABS, cornering traction, which uh, I, the IMU system provides. So in other words, for $9,000, you don't get those things. And in this motorcycle, you also don't get Brembo's front and back. You're also not gonna get premium uh, tires on this motorcycle. But at the end of the day, like, who cares? If you're not gonna be using this as a track toy once a month or four, five, six times a year, and this is gonna be your not only a commuter bike for you, but also something that you're gonna be enjoying on the weekends. I don't see why this can be a bad motorcycle considering it doesn't have all those top spec options. I think uh, what this motorcycle is going for is overall fun and excitement. If you're looking for overall fun and excitement, I think this is the bike for you. And you don't wanna break the bank, you don't wanna spend a lot of money, then this would be the bike. The only thing that I would probably upgrade on this motorcycle 
and that's just a preference maybe you don't need it but I would probably uh, upgrade to you it's a quick shifter so overall I think the motorcycle just needs a quick shifter and then you have a motorcycle that is easy to live with now I've been riding in a mode all this time but we're gonna kick it down to B mode because that's perfect for like urban areas such as the one I'm riding in right now a lot of traffic a lot of stoplights you don't want that aggressive on and off throttle so let's see how that performs riding casually on the street as I am right now going back and forth to work maybe going to the grocery store or whatever you might be doing on you on a day-to-day -day basis I think B mode is just perfect the throttle delivery is very smooth and it's not on and off like uh, a mode is definitely on and off but uh, the B mode is definitely gradual very smooth very linear and if I had this bike this is the mode that I would ride in all the time as well and then you know when you want to have some hooligan lunacy fun kick it up a notch into a gear or standard mode so these mirrors are a little bit flimsy it just went down at the moment so uh, I don't know I would get some aftermarket mirrors to replace these as, as you can see it's, it didn't stay where I left it last time but overall as far as uh, the styling of this motorcycle is concerned it's a muscular chiseled looking Street Fighter-esque motorcycle as it's meant to be that three-cylinder engine has got some great character it's got it's got a great personality and in stock form with its stock exhaust sounds pretty good similar to my 765 I think and at this point I'm really curious to know if the 765 is louder or this is louder that's something that we're gonna have to find out whenever I do the comparison video of these two motorcycles to come so make sure you stay tuned for that but for now very comfortable bike perfect as a commuter and as far as the power is concerned man I am not disappointed this thing has a serious amount of grunt very very happy with how much power this has and it's a lot of fun but otherwise for nine thousand dollars you are getting a lot of motorcycle for your money hands down one of the best motorcycles out there for the money and if you're looking to buy used well come down to prestige motorcycles in san diego and you can buy this one because honestly i can't really tell the difference between new and used with this bike this has been an amazing review of a bike that i've been looking forward to riding for a very long time so anyways, if you're looking to purchase an FZ09 after I've ridden so many of these middle-class naked bikes, I can definitely say that this is something that has not disappointed me one bit. Alright guys, I will uh, catch you guys on the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.